What's up guys? It's me, Sir Ernest, and today we're going to continue solving problem 2.38 of Griffith's 4th edition. Okay, so let me read again the problem. A metal sphere of radius R carrying charge Q is surrounded by a thick concentric metal shell of inner radius A, outer radius B, as shown in the figure. Find uh, the, the shell carries no net charge. And here we're going to find the potential at the center using infinity as the reference point. Okay, so again, let me draw the problem. So this is your metal sphere of radius R. This is the inner radius of this thick concentric metal shell. And this is your outer radius okay so here we're going to set our reference points to be at infinity so that means we're going to find the potential okay at the center so that's r equal to zero and this is equal to integral of the electric field Uh, dotted it with your infinitesimal length dl so this is a line integral from infinity which is our reference point to the center at zero okay so you will notice here that the electric field okay as the elect as, uh, as a charge or uh, as uh, our point goes from infinity to zero encounters four regions this region where R is greater than B uh, inside this metal shell where R is between A and B this space between the shell and the sphere so that is between R and A and the region inside the metal sphere okay so that means this will involve four integrals covering the four regions okay wherein the electric field is different okay so let's start to calculate that electric field at first at inside let's start with inside so the electric field inside the sphere okay so we know that uh, we can solve this by using Gauss law. We're in, if we're going to choose this region, okay, because this is a conductor, we already know that the charge resides at the surface. And that is positive Q. And inside this region, therefore, there is no enclosed charge. So therefore, the electric field is zero. Okay? So again, because the enclosed charge is zero by Gauss law. Next part will be the region between the shell and the sphere so that means this is r greater than r capital r and it is less than a okay so this is now the gaussian surface so remember this is not a circular gaussian surface this is a spherical gaussian surface of radius r so in this case the enclosed charge is q so therefore, the electric field, I'm going to skip the actual implementation of Gauss law because this is just a, essentially a metal shell, a uh, 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 surface charge or spherical surface with charge Q. So this is Q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared r hat. Again, because Q enclosed, in this case, is Q. Now, how about the third region? 
electric field between R, which, uh, before, uh, lesson R, uh, lesson B, and greater than A. Okay? So, where is that? That is the point between A and B. So, we already know that because of this charge accumulation at the surface of this metal sphere, okay, this charge will induce a negative charge at the inner surface negative A. Okay? And the amount of charge induced here will be equal in magnitude to this charge but opposite in sign. So therefore, the enclosed charge by this Gaussian surface would be what? Would be equal to zero, correct? Okay? Because the net charge of the two Accumulation of charges is zero. So therefore, electric field is zero. Because again, enclosed charge is zero. And then lastly, the fourth region, the region beyond B, so that's electric field at R greater than B. Okay, so that means... We're looking at this Gaussian surface. Okay, so as again, if there is induced charge, if there are induced charges at the inner surface, so therefore, uh, because of the information that the surface, uh, the shell carries no net charge, so there will now be an accumulation of positive Q at the outer surface of the spherical shell. Okay? So that means the total charge enclosed by this bigger uh, spherical uh, Gaussian surface will be equal to Q. So therefore, the electric field will be Q over 4 pi epsilon naught R squared, R hat. Okay? So now we can now assemble or decompose or break down this integral into four regions. So the potential at the center will be equal to the negative integral of the electric field dot dl inside so this is uh, from outside to inside. So this is from infinity to B minus integral of electric field dot DL or the line integral of the electric field from B to A minus the integral of the electric field dot DL again from A to R and then integral of the electric field dot dl from r to the center so we already know that the electric field from a to b from a to b sorry is zero and at zero to r so the only thing that will remain is the region between the spaces or the space between the sphere and the shell and outside the shell. Okay, so now we can re re reduce these two to integrals. So this is now equal to negative integral from negative infinity to B of 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared then there's a Q here, and then dr. Just remember that dl is dr r hat. So that product between r hat and r hat would be 1. 
and this becomes a simple multiplic uh, simple multiplication. The next one will be negative integral from a to r of 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught then q here and then r here dr which leads us to this simplification of negative q over 4 pi epsilon naught times integral of 1 over r squared which is uh, Which is negative, which is negative 1 over r evaluated from negative infinity to b minus, uh, yeah, 1 over r evaluated from a to r. So this is now equal to plus, plus, plus. So this is q over 4 pi epsilon naught times 1 over b minus 1 over infinity so that's 0 so this is 1 over b and then 1 over r minus 1 over a so this is now the potential at the center Okay, and it depends on how big your dimensions are or the sphere and the shell is. Okay, so this ends the solution to problem 2.38, letter B. Uh, I hope it, this uh, gives you an idea on how to calculate potential for conductors. And I hope you learned something today and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.